there's a ghost. The ghost of my great grandmother. This is going to be a listener story. I'm special. so excited. I awoke to the sound of the baby monitor crackling with a voice comforting my firstborn child. It turns out that I too am a ghost hun. Now that I live alone, it's much more unsettling. But a handful referred to a full on apparition of an old man sitting on a large wooden chair in the corner of the bathroom. Housed in one of Edinburgh's oldest buildings and on the site of some of Scotland's most notorious witch burnings, we can only assume that the ghost of the old man or some of the spirit really didn't like musical theatre. I feel like she she, she kind of executed this. Mm -hmm. Did you write that, Hannah? I did. Yeah! yeah. Welcome, Welcome to, to Ghost, Ghost Hunts with episode <laughs> Susie Priest Keep lying. <laughs> and Hannah Bitchkovsky episode 11 episode episode 11 episode 11 episode 11 we've come so far oh my god Can't you come so far now after this we will have done 11 hours of this it's actually too much is there an HR department why what complaint do you have <laughs> what? What complaint have you got? Are we working too many hours. Oh, Eleven right. hours. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Eleven. Bit Sexual much. assault. No. I do ten minute gigs and get paid for them. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all I'll do. Yeah. But eleven hours we on can't. this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I go to Ibiza next week, but fuck it, I want this. Fuck. Complaint. I'm not getting paid five. I can't wait for you to go to Ibiza. I am looking forward to it. Mm. Um, have you had some good gigs good life i had some really good gigs you know yeah i went to brighton i had some good gigs in brighton i went to oh, i've never gigged there is it fun yeah it's really good it's really really good it's oh. good it's a good club in brighton um but that was fun i've been doing some bits of press so i have a little surprise for you i have got us two tickets to 222 a ghost story. no yes, uh, yes shut your face how did you do that? Because they've invited some of the cast. <gasps> and I think I get a plus one. So. Oh, am I your plus one? Yeah, Adam was like, am I not going? And I was like, no. No. No, of course you're not going. Obviously. Yeah, not to this, babe. No, yeah. Oh it's on the but I might ask them. I'm basically, basically what happened is they invited some of the cast. And we're like, oh, we'd love to have the rest of the cast come. Mm. And then uh, I basically said, um, I've sent them an email being like, hey, we do a podcast about ghosts. So I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. But I think we can get a couple of tickets. Um, but we don't have to do it on that day, I don't think. Well, I've got um, a smear test at midday. Okay. Um, so I'm busy then. Yeah. Uh, you, but we, can't, we can't mess around with that. Yeah, though. I don't want to fuck You've got a great tarot future ahead of you. I know. You don't want to... Yeah. You don't want... Um, get uh, that screen Vagina cancer to ruin it. Yeah, that would be grim. That's not the right word, is it? Vagina cancer. The VC, Beef. the big VC. <laughs> so that's it. We're going to see two twenty two ghost story with Cheryl Cole. Stop. Apparently, she's brilliant. I apparently I saw she's that. really good. And do you know what? I believe that she is. After having seen her on um, Ghost Hunting yeah. with Yvette yeah. Fielding, I'm like, oh, you oh, just that really hurt my nails. <laughs> oh, she oh. just hit the computer sad, herself. Sad, sad, sad. Um, so Hannah, yes, and listeners, um, this is going to be a listener story. I'm special. so excited that people have now started sending us in. I know their ghost stories. So we've got um, we've got like a, a little selection. We've got one that's a, a WhatsApp um, ghost story. We've got a few emailed in, and we're just going to pick three of them. And yeah, we're just going to read them out and have a little discussion about what we think might have happened. Love it. But um, essentially, this episode is going to be about like true stories things that have happened to people that they can't explain before we do that can i yeah. just play one little game with you I, i'd love to <laughs> i think this is going to be quite hard to be honest with you um i've i found mm. um two sentence scary stories oh cool so i'm going to read you some but i've also made some up myself and oh. i would like you to tell me after each one <laughs> So I, I can't slag any of them off in case I'm like, well, that was but shit. But I want you to decide after I tell you each one, which yeah. one you think I've written. Okay. I can't tell how obvious this is going to be. It's going <laughs> to be If it's so like, hard. he's a fucking twat. No, it's going to be And I'll be great. like, that one's This is going to be really easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to read them out. And then after I do them, I'm going to look at you and you tell me whether or not you think I've, these, are, these are like actually written by people who can write or they're written about me. Ooh. Written about me, written by me. You ready? Okay. Yeah. There was a picture in my phone of me sleeping. I live alone. Hang on. <laughs> There's a picture of me in my phone. 
Oh uh, yeah, no, that's cool. yeah. So I'm really slow, by the way. Yeah, so it takes me a while good. to understand. That's it's like jokes; help. I don't ever get them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, great. Ah. <laughs> um, I think that was not yours. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a very pleasant dream when what sounded like hammering woke me up. After that, I could barely hear the muffled sound of dirt covering the coffin over my own screams. Oh, she's got a twinkle in her eye. I don't think it was yours. It's not mine. You're yeah, right. I knew so it. You're so good at this. You're so good at this. I awoke to the sound of the baby monitor crackling with a voice comforting my firstborn child. As I adjusted to a new position, my arm brushed against my wife, sleeping next to me. Wait. Uh. I woke up to the sound of the baby monitor crackling with a voice comforting my firstborn child. Yeah, okay. As I adjusted to a new position, my arm brushed against my wife, sleeping next to me. Mm, so I don't think that's her. yours, because it could be anyone. Yeah. Is it yours? No. Oh, yeah, no, I knew I it. Want. Yeah, we haven't had a Hannah special yet. Waking up cuddling a kebab. <laughs> Ooh, here's a contender. <laughs> That's the end. Until Waking up. <laughs> to be fair, that is a horror story. Waking up cuddling a kebab until you feel sweet corn relish on your chin. Didn't you already eat your kebab? You look up and it's your bastard ex, ellipses. <laughs> Sorry, the way you looked at me when you went ellipses. <laughs> did you write that, Hannah? I did. Yeah. yeah. Ten out of ten. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. That is an A star. Oh, very good. Okay, great. Uh, my wife woke up to me last night to tell me there was an intruder in our house. She was murdered by an intruder two years ago. Oh, I like that one. I'm not sure it's yours. It's not mine. Yeah. Growing up with cats and dogs, I got used to the sounds of scratching at my door while I slept. Now that I live alone, it's much more unsettling. Say it again. Growing up with cats and dogs, I got used to the sounds of scratching at my door while I slept. Now that I live alone, it's much more unsettling. Mm, not yours, though. Not mine. Yeah, I knew it. You get, <laughs> you get home. Tired after a long day's work and ready for a relaxing night alone, you reach for the light switch, but another hand is already there. It's <gasps> Keith Chegwin's. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, think before <laughs> you speak. Do you think it's mine or someone else's? I think it's yours. It is mine. <laughs> it's yours. Oh, God. You know what? I was Did quite creeped out by that image yeah. until you said um, yeah. Keith Chegwin. Keith Chegwin. Um, so um, I love that. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Fun, right? Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. And I also think that we should do um, a bit more like we are writers. Like our, we are our job writers. is to write yeah. jokes. And so I, I think, think that kebab one was actually. I thought it should have just ended it. You wake up, you're, you're hugging a kebab. No, I like that, though. That's a nice story. <laughs> mm, I would have eaten the kebab. Uh, no, you wouldn't. You would have eaten fucking six chicken nuggets and gone to bed and waited another day before you ate something else. Oh. Yeah, I, I had, had a really... So much. I'm such a naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> six chicken nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> Get in, loser. We're getting nuggies. <laughs> Um, lovely. So, uh, let's start with some listener stories. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to kick it off with one that was emailed in. I don't know whether it was Peking Lynn or the scrape of a Sharpie on a plywood bedroom door, but having thought that I had never been haunted, episode one brought my only truly spooky experience screaming back to me. Well, that's fucking terrifying because episode one was fucking mad. It was fucking mad. I know. And I love it. Yeah. It's it's inspired people to think of their spooky past. It turns out that I too am a ghost hun. We love it. Anyone who listens to this is a ghost hun. We love that. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to start these sorts of stories by assuring you that I don't really believe in ghosts and that all I can tell you is that these things happen to me. These statements are cliched and absolutely true. The telling of this tale involves one of Edinburgh's most famous haunted buildings, a toilet in brackets she's put, sorry, Hannah, because you don't like toilet, I don't toilet like talk, toilet. Uh, and the musical stylings of Ewan McGregor. And the details are all cold, hard fact. And one detail in particular, my husband and I simply can't explain. It's June 2017. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in Alabama. <laughs> Edinburgh. Um, sorry. Yeah. It's June 2017. Wonder Woman is smashing it at the box office. I love it. I love the just getting us back to 2017. Jesus my husband, Alex, has just whisked me away to Edinburgh for a surprise mini break at the iconic witchery by the Castle Restaurant and Hotel. <laughs> now you have to take that the horrible eh? <laughs> oh do you know what we should go here when we go to Edinburgh yeah I know uh, I don't think we can afford it but why I, uh, we'll just pop in we can pop in pop in you don't have to stay the night no. yeah true 
<clears throat> skin artists we can't afford that yeah, exactly if you've oh, never heard of the witchery uh <laughs> yeah i live in a bin um if you've never heard of the witchery google it immediately google it go on <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean you barney i just meant the listener like go on google it uh, and lap up the madness of the image search results have you got any Oh, oh, that looks beautiful. Wow. Okay, to be fair, if you, you what you need to do, oh, that looks like you're inside this, a womb. Look at that. Like you're in an ovary. A haunted womb. You'll see that little dog around soon. Oh, uh oh. Keep Hannah away. Lovely. Lock her up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, housed in one of Edinburgh's oldest buildings and on the site of some of Scotland's most notorious witch burnings, it's a theatrical gothic fantasy at the very top of the Royal Mile. It's two restaurants and nine suites have perhaps best described as the set of a Hammer House of Horror movie. There you go. Um, and it's said to be loved by the Hollywood glitterati. Famous guests are rumoured to have included Catherine Zeta-Jones, Michael Douglas, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie and Ewan McGregor. Right. Right, it's all the famous. Love it. Uh, it. <clears throat> they love it. Uh, he books us a suite called The Inner Sanctum. No, don't worry. Well, apparently the witchery's OG suite. No. Why? I just don't like it. Well, you did say it was womb-like. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Inner sanctum mm. sounds like butthole. fallopian tubes. Bummer. Oh. Okay, bum hole. We've gone straight. I want to go stay in the butthole. We've gone to bum hole. <laughs> we should set up a hotel Amazing. chain. Amazing. Um, this is what it looks like, by the way, guys. The inner sanctuary. Oh, it does look like a weird. Oh. It's not really for me. I can appreciate that it's Do you know very... what? The one thing I would say about that room, it shouldn't have a white ceiling. No, it shouldn't. It looks insane. It the looks top modern. looks like an exhibition, like a, like a fucking meeting room. Yeah. The bottom looks... Yeah, I don't know. Unfortunately, that doesn't match the rest. No. So, sorry, Witchery. It's a no from us. Sorry. And we can't Won't afford you anyway. be getting inside you. We How much s- is it, do you know? Uh, I think a lot. To say, to say prices? I'd say about 400 quid a night. I'm going to say 750 no, that's she. insane, isn't it? That is that really insane. Two, no, uh, 275. 375, I don't know. Oh. 375. Is this um, relevant to the story? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> we were escorted up a narrow staircase, stained glass windows, crumbling flagstones, carved banisters, the works, by an eccentric... <laughs> by an eccentric <laughs> Scottish guy called Roxy. <laughs> and you better fucking believe I'm going to do a Scottish accent, <laughs> all right? So just hold on to your I fucking labia. Do, I can only do Lorraine. Hold on to your labias, <laughs> gals. We're going Scottish. I can only Scottish. do Lorraine Kelly Scottish. Go on. Hello, I'm Lorraine Kelly, and that's great. Oh, that's quite good, Thank you know. You can't do anything else. Oh, well done. That was a bit patronising, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, right. An eccentric Scottish guy called Roxy and led to a shining wooden door with a huge golden knocker in the shape of a lion's head. Roxy drew a key from his pocket, the kind that looked as if it should open a chest of cursed riches, turned it in the lock and pushed open the door. We stepped into the... We've seen the room. Spectacular room, mahogany table, elaborate cabinets mm. stuffed with treasures and bookcases spilled over with gorgeous antique tomes. Listener, I was so thrilled I cried. Philippa had a cry. I thought that was it. I thought you were Philippa. <laughs> Philippa. <laughs> the end. Philippa 32. She's just showing off about going to a fancy hotel. Yeah, That's Philippa 32, Balam. Um, this is incredible, I kept repeating to Roxy. This is absolutely incredible. Lassie, you nae see nothing yet. <laughs> he replied. Oh making his way towards one of the two additional doors set into the right and left-hand walls. Wait till you see the bedroom. Why did you look me in the eye when you said that? It felt like the most aggressive, come on. Wait till you see the bedroom. I'm going to I'm gonna whisk you there when we go to Edinburgh oh God. for a lovely night of ghost hunting. Yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, which is your bedroom. Uh, in my state of overwhelm, I hadn't noticed that this room did not contain a bed. I'm very rarely lost for words, but on this occasion, my vocabulary failed me. There was an enormous tapestry hung, four poster bed, leather armchairs, a roaring fire. Champagne was on ice in a gleaming. Co- I'd love that. Yeah, I'd I love, love that. champagne. Yeah. And on a, ice. a fire. Yeah, and classical music was piping some soothing symphony from Hidden Speakers. It was I realised, sorry, I've just realised I was smashing this. It looks like I'm having a wank again. Why are you wanking to this? I was, doing, no, I was this? doing this. I was doing this, but I was doing it down here. And then I just looked <laughs> up and I was like, oh. She's just frotting herself at the thought of the witchery. <laughs> the inner <That> sanctum. <laughs> okay, no more I did more tell you to hold on to your labour. No so. more wanking. I was holding on and uh, wanking. All right. Is this Sorry, room? Sorry, Mum. Uh, is this room haunted? I asked Roxy. Ah, well, <laughs> there'd been a few good few guests to say so. And have you ever seen anything? Oh, aye, <laughs> that I have. 
And with that, he slipped away. <laughs> Are you adding these ochs and eyes? No. Oh, God. All in there. Philip has got it all. Jesus. I made a beeline for the visitor's book and I scoured the pages for the words ghost or haunted and it didn't take long to find the spooky stories told by guests gone by. Wow. The majority of references were to the lights in the room having a mind of their own, but a handful referred to a full-on apparition of an old man sitting on the large wooden chair in the corner of the bathroom. I was delighted by this and of course somewhat anxious about using the bathroom. No one wants to be doing their business and realise they have an undead voyeur. Fair. Putting aside thoughts of pervy bathroom ghosts, we immediately popped the champagne and then went for a stroll around one of our favourite cities. We then changed for dinner and giggled as the lights gave the occasional flicker on and off. Why? Because it... What do you mean? Why are you giggling? Well, because it's like... Um, it's a nod to the haunted lights because people in the guest book have said the lights uh, go on. So they're like, oh, here we go. Oh, right. Yeah? Sorry, Philippa. And then she put dodgy wiring ofs. And why fix it when you can get a good ghost story in the visitor's book? I completely agree. Right? So you wouldn't think anything weird at this point. It was a bit weird when they turned off and wouldn't turn back on, forcing me to use a table lamp to do my makeup. Oh my God, Philippa, I am so sorry. You probably went out there looking like... A drag shit. queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As if you, you go can get the there, found it. No, Bonnie, I know it sounds weird, <clears> but <throat> not one woman on this earth can get... Or man, can get their makeup. We need to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not one... Some people aren't women or men, right? <laughs> not one person Thank you. on this planet can do their makeup accurately by fucking table lamp. Yeah, or on the tube. Do you, no. Are you one of those tube gals? No, I did once and it, I was just like, this is too hard. It's I like using hard. my tube journey for napping. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I love it. It rocks me to sleep like a baby. Oh, you can fucking anything that moves to anything, fall can't asleep. You? Stri- yeah, I'll sleep You could probably do it now. Do it now, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, she, so she's doing a makeup in the table lamp, only for it to blaze back to life, and the lights were on just as we left the room. But hey, definitely normal in an old building. We thought nothing of it. We spent the evening enjoying the witchery's legendary hospitality down in their dining room, and we we're back up to the room by about nine thirty or ten, pretty early, all things considered. We thought it was the ideal time to crack out a glass of the whiskey and pop on one of the DVDs stacked in a neat pile by the television. It was an odd collection. Chicago, Moulin Rouge, a box set of the Darling Buds of May, Train Spotting, obviously Train Spotting. Um, Never watched Train Spotting. Was it good? Oh, it, it's a brilliant it's film. Brilliant. It's brilliant. It looks a bit dark. It's all like crackheady. Mm, it's no, like it's young Ewan McGregor. No. It's great. No, thank you. But it's I think they chose, her. I'm going to guess that they chose Train Spotting. No. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Fight Club Ocean's Eleven. It took a lolly. Uh, they all starred the celebrities that stayed in the room. We decided on oh, Moulin Rouge. That's cool. I fucking love Moulin Rouge. It's my favourite film. I've seen it about 82 times. I've never seen it. What? Yeah, no. Did you not watch it? And I love younger? musicals, no. Why? Don't know. I was probably. You <laughs> love it! <laughs> Your lip has just gone <laughs> like a rabbit. <laughs> like, you stupid bitch. You honestly, like, you, wanted to, you hated me in that. I way, could have like. No, I like it. I probably was watching Les Mis or something like that. What a shit choice. Yeah, and I, are you kidding me? Les Mis is the best. Nope. All I want. Oh, no, that's not that. That's my fat lady. <laughs> All I want, want is, is room somewhere. somewhere. Is it my fat lady? It's definitely not Les Mis, is it? <laughs> All I want is my red back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we decided on Moulin Rouge. Oh, I can't believe you haven't seen it. Anyway, I just, I can't get over it. I'm sorry. We're going to have to stop the podcast. If you haven't seen it, we just have to put it on. Just put it on. Um, and after all, who doesn't love a bit of Nicole Kibben and Ewan McGregor belting out love duets at Cabaret Brothel? Oh, so Ewan McGregor's in that too. Mm. Oh, that makes sense. Well, as it turned out, uh, someone seemed to have strong feelings about it. Everything was all well and good until the first big number, Lady Marmalade. The song was just getting going when the TV inexplicably went completely black. The rest of the power in the room was fine. Even the lights were behaving. So Alex went to investigate. It turned out the SCART lead, the cable that connects the DVD player to the TV, had come I know out. about that, yeah. yeah. See, I don't, I didn't know what that was. No, 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 SCART lead is. No, Chris, I'm, I'm like a little a lady and I don't know man. about... Oh, so you're SCART lead out, man? I don't know why I am. <laughs> so then I... But I'm really okay. glad Philippa did say what it was because I'd have been like, what? Um, the cable that connects the DVD player to the TV had come out. Alex plugged it back in and on we went. The number concludes. We've missed most of it while the TV was disconnected because, of course, the DVD was still playing while we were faffing about with Scarlet Leeds. And shortly afterwards, the next number begins. The one where Nicole Kidman descends from the ceiling and sings Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. The TV goes black. 
Exactly the same thing had happened again. The cable had been pulled out of the DVD player and was lying on the floor. I wonder whether it's a loose connection, whether we need to wedge something behind the cable to stop it falling out. But as Alex plugs it back in, it's clear that there's nothing amiss. The old SCART lead that plugs into the back of the DVD players are really chunky and the connection was very tight. I can even hear the solid thunk as Alex pushes the plug back in. It's definitely securely in its socket, so on we go. I suspect you can imagine what happened next. Every time a big number began, the cable was pulled out of the DVD player, sending the screen blank. I just looked over my laptop and I thought it said kebab, but it didn't. It just says, keep all of your tabs, but I saw all the letters that I like. She's really concentrating on the story. You're like, I just looked at my laptop to see if it said kebab. No, I didn't, no, I just looked, I glanced over to check the time and saw that it said, keep all of your tabs, and I thought it said kebab. Lovely story. Thank you for that. I'm really hungry. I think we put it back in another three or four times before we gave up, somewhere around the Elephant Love medley. There was no loose connection. There was no way the cable could be pulled out of the DVD player without some force, but there it was, repeatedly disconnected, with no rational explanation that we can think of. We can only assume that the ghost of the old man or some other spirit really didn't like musical theatre. To be fair, it's a feeling shared by many. The remainder of the night passed without major incident, though the lights never quite settled down. At some point, I was woke up when they all came on for a few seconds and they turned themselves off again. Oh, that's getting a bit much, isn't it? Alex slept through this momentary flash of potential spirit activity, so this is the one element of the story that I need to put down to an overactive imagination. Needless to say, I spent the rest of the night hiding under the covers, too afraid to go to the bathroom alone, and I had to force myself to wait until the daylight to go for a pee. Just wake him up. And what, get him in the bathroom with you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Philip is a good girl. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, daylight did indeed did indeed return and brought with it Roxy and our breakfast hamper. Slept well, did you? He asked. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we both said it was everything we hoped it would be. And dear listener, it most certainly was. <laughs> we love that, Philippa. Absolutely. I think, story. That, I think the ghosts are real now. I've changed my mind since that tarot game. <sighs> yeah. I'm no which longer we did scared. last week. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I love that. Um, so we've got a, a lovely list. Thank of you, Philippa. That was great. That's gorgeous. If you have any um, stories like that, any weird goings on in hotels, send them in. Ghosthunspod yeah. at gmail.com. We'd love to read your stories. Yeah. Um, I've got another one. Hi Susie, this is Victoria and I have a ghost story that I was willing to tell you. This uh, ghost story is exotic as my accent. So the story takes place in Argentina, my hometown. Mm. Not in Buenos Aires, as most of your listeners might Don't do think. the accent, Susie. Don't Buenos do Aires. Fucking accent. Gracias, Victoria. Oh my God. It takes place in a very remote place called the Peñaderos. It's actually... 20 kilometers from Alta Gracia. And Alta Gracia is only important because it's the city where Che Guevara was born. Che Guevara, the famous revolutionary, freedom fighter, revolutionary, or terrorist, depending on the top. I don't, I don't you know. You don't know who Che Guevara is? No idea, no. Hang on. You have, you, so you haven't seen Moulin Rouge <laughs> and you don't know who Che Guevara is? No. You need to leave. <laughs> you need to leave. You gotta leave, girl. Right <laughs> <Girl. laughs> <laughs> back. Get a rewind. Are you mental? Oh, I just didn't know that was his name. He's that bloke who was played by what's his yeah. face? Gael Garcia Bernal. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a revolutionary Cuban. Yeah, I didn't realise that was him. I just didn't know. Oh, name. okay. I know. You are bluffing so hard. <laughs> You're like, oh him. No, yeah. he's on loads of t shirts, me. Yeah, that that guy. He's on lots of lots of t shirts. Continue. There is what my great grandmother has uh house but this is not uh, a normal house this is a estancia estancia is like a rancho uh picture of um, a texan rancho but then you have facilities for the people that used to work there so you have the workers room separated from the main house the workers have their own kitchen as well and then you have warehouses uh, to pile up uh, grain meat and um, also um, where you could uh, park the tractors and heavy machinery to work the land. So it's a huge house with huge warehouses and also facilities for workers and an Olympic pool. Mm, that rancho's uh, got everything. It's a ghost. 
the ghost mm. of my great grandmother, oh. whose name was Hermelinda. Well, we call her Tita, very angry woman. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I relate. I relate. <laughs> She's very angry. Grandma, grandma. Tita, angry grandma woman. Grandma Tita. Tita. Oh, I thought you were calling her Tater, and I thought that's Tater. More cultural inappropriate. <laughs> oh, Grandma Tita. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different grandma, and she lives in Cork. <laughs> <laughs> and this ghost has been there for a while. How do we know it's a ghost? Because everybody who has been there at that house and has uh, stayed over the night say there is a ghost, the ghost of her, all different people. Uh, she had uh, two single, uh, two sons that were single of their lives. Uh, one was gay. How do we know this? Because after he died, we found a lot of gay magazines in his room. Confirms it. Gay mags under the bed, definitely gay. Bisexual. Could be. But, you know, single till they're dead. Eternal bachelor. <laughs> single till I die. <laughs> yeah, love it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> um... And the other one uh, wasn't gay, uh, just a single. I love man. that. I love that she's clarifying the them. sexuality <laughs> of these two. Not gay, gay on a podcast that's <laughs> going to be so out there. Funny. Everybody. She's just like, just so you know, just for context. When you yes. see the ghost of Grandma Tita, uh, and they moved out of the house into trailers outside of the house. Hmm. Yeah. So pretty wild story. <laughs> Imagine now, it ended there. Currently. Bye. <laughs> That's it. Gay uncle, non-gay uncle. The end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After uh, both of them died and uh, my grandma inherited this, this house and um, my mum has stayed overnight a couple of times uh, with friends, right? But uh, my mama has never seen, my grandma or mother has never seen the ghost. Apparently it only um shows up to people who who are not relatives of mm. grandma okay so this ghost is only showing itself to like strangers yeah but you know, that makes me quite cynical why because it because it's just one of those like she only comes out when no one's there oh well, well, isn't that ironic if the Tree falls in the woods. Does a ghost really exist? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's the phrase. <laughs> it just makes me quite cynical. That it's all the people and not the people that you trust the most. Do you know what I mean? I just think there's got to be a reason. Like, why why is Grandma Tita only appearing? To, is it that she's like, I only love family. It's like only about family and everyone else can. Be oh like, yeah, you like, need is to there something fuck angry? off. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, get off my rancho. Two of my mum's friends have seen the ghost. Um, one of them claims that uh, she, she realized there was a ghost because um, she felt like someone was in her bed. And when she turned around, she saw apparently the ghost. And my ma and there is another friend that uh, also claims to have seen her. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I would hate to wake up to someone else's great grandma just in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's great. <laughs> Sorry, my own. Fine, keep um, it in the family. I think it's a bit. I, that reminds me of thinking, like you know, when you 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 know when you if you were someone when you're old. Which I this is why I'm not going to get married or have a long term relationship because mm. so someone's going to die and someone's going to be left in the bed. Do you know what I mean? Someone is going to wake up. One of the two of you is going to wake up next to a corpse. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, and if it all goes well and naturally, you're going to yeah. wake up to your dead husband, wife, lover. Yeah, lover. cold. And there's a cost of living crisis on now. Oh, is there? So if <laughs> you don't want a cold, dead corpse next to you, we spent all night with eating on. Mm. It's just a waste <laughs> of heating, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, never, I never just wanted to... Never true word spoken. <laughs> <laughs> never a true word word spoken. Okay. Carry on, please. Um, yeah, they don't want to stay. <laughs> You've stopped Victoria and all. So she shows up to people who were not of the family. And one of my mum's friends last time uh, he saw her said, Hey, I'm not of the family, but I'm just taking care of your house. And it's good if you want to leave. Um, by now, everybody knows that there is a ghost. So not a lot of people want to stay over at her house. So probably she is. Um, I know, fulfilling her life ambition as a ghost. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay. so that's the ghost story. I'm sorry I took so long to 
to record this message. Don't apologise, Victoria. We will go. We will go. I want to go to the rancho. We will go to the rancho and we will stay. I like the idea that there's someone who went and went, listen, you, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, looking yeah, after yeah, this yeah, house, yeah. just feel free yeah. to leave. And she's like, no, I want to yeah, fucking haunt the fuck out of the yeah, guests. Yeah, I'd be like, don't tell me what to do, what to do in my Yeah, she's a rancho, bit angry, actually. she's a bit ragey. Fuck off. I kind of like the, that. The, the, I like that the sexuality of both uh, uncles. uncles had absolutely nothing to do with the story. The gunkles. Um, the gunkles. <laughs> the one gunkle. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the sunkle and the gunkle. <laughs> <laughs> Sunkle sounds disgusting. Sunkle. That, do you know what Sunkle sounds like? Sunkle sounds like a, 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 the street name for a belly button. <laughs> oh, I hate belly buttons. Do you? Oh, I feel sick. They are a bit weird, really. Like make, It's all a bit weird. I have a phobia of them. It's where your old placenta was. Oh, it? fuck off. I yeah. hate hearing about the them. I never want them. to talk about this ever again. Have you ever... Have you, no, listen. Have you ever... <laughs> no. I have you ever it. been hugging someone... Have you ever been snuggling Johnny and he's been big spoon and then when he's pulled away, your father from no. like his body? <laughs> what do you mean? Is yeah. it like because you've been pressed against each other? There's been a vacuum, a vacuum from his from belly, his belly button, button to your back, and then when no. he pulls away, goes. I felt that with bodies, as in like the no, vacuum you'll feet your next time. That's disgusting. Is Johnny the big spoon or the little spoon? Big spoon. Right, so you will definitely feel his belly button suction away That's from your gross. back. Gross. Yeah, it's gross. I I hate them so much. Yeah. If if you were to touch my belly button, mm. I'd punch you in the face. So what, it's your own belly button? Or... Disgusting, I actually can't think about it. Which is worse, me touching yours or me making you touch mine? I could touch yours if you went anywhere that near mine. That is so weird. I fucking hate it. Like, I fucking hate it. Okay. I find them so repulsive. Yeah, but why, so I why are you not bothered sick. about other people's belly buttons then? Mm, it's my own. It's the idea of anyone <laughs> going near it. How vile is your belly button? It's What's fine. going on with it? It's fine. It doesn't my sound belly like button it. is lovely. It doesn't sound great. Welcome to our segment of, uh, uh, what's it called? Celeb. Well, we're going to have to come up with a better name. Celeb Ghost Stories. Yeah. Okay, so um, as as we heard, uh, mm. Girls Aloud went ghost hunting with a vet fielding. And as a few people have said online on TikTok, they were like, oh my God, you have to cover the Saturdays. Yeah, you, I, I thought your ghost story was brilliant. I thought your celeb segment was brilliant about that, actually. Oh, really felt like I was there. Yeah, well, here comes the segment of the Saturdays. Yes. Um, so they, again, 2011, a lovely... Now, just to remind you of the Saturdays, because I'm a bit um, live under a rock, live in a bin. Yeah. Um, so the five Saturdays, you've got Frankie, who's mm, got that pixie cut. I know Frankie, cut. yeah, yeah. Um, she's quite fit, isn't she? Got, Molly. very attractive, though. Um, she's she, Molly the blonde one. She's the posh blonde yeah. one who used to have a job in the skiing industry. Ah. Um, then you've got Una. And then you've got Rochelle, who's like the cynical tall one. She married a JLS. Yes. And then you got the youngest one, Vanessa, who I think was in the line. I do know every single one yeah. except for Vanessa. I've got no idea. If she she's is. like the young one. She talks like she's like, oh no, I don't I like know. it. I don't like it. Anyway, so can you Google a Barney? I want to see her face. I want to visit you. Whilst the she's fucking place. great. They all go to a country estate in North Wales, which was a hospital orphanage or like care home. Um, Una, she's wearing Uggs. Obviously, it's classic. It's so 2011. Ugly. Yeah, uh, this is Vanessa from the Saturday. Oh, do you know she could come up in the, my head, punch me in the back of the face, and call me Susan? I would have no idea if she yeah. was. Yeah, that's Vanessa. Sorry, Vanessa. If you're um. Anyway, so Vet does. takes them around this house, right? And then she takes them down to the dungeons, mm -hmm. and she says, "If there's a spirit here, can you throw something or touch one of the girls?" And then they all start screaming. Yeah. They're like, "No, if it, no." <laughs> And then, um, and then she splits them off. So Una and Vanessa split off and stay in a room. And then why um, are they splitting off? This is the first thing you. Oh, this is the first rule of ghost hunting: mm. never split off. You remember Stick what together. happened to Demi Lovato and her sister? Yeah, exactly. When they went, all that singing, all that singing. Um, and then Yvette and Rochelle go to a fridge. It's like a big fridge, mm. and they get in there. And um, sorry, what? It's like a big old fridge. Why do they get in it? Well, they get in it because Yvette thinks it's haunted, and then. Um, uh, and then Rochelle goes, I'm telling you, someone died in that fridge, right? And they're in the fridge. And then they go to the ground floor, which is haunted. And apparently this old lady, this like really ragey old lady, mm. could be Grandma Potato. Could be Grandma Potato. Potato. Grandma Potato, yeah. And the vet says, um, she died in this room. Yeah. Are you a lady? You were a grumpy old lady. She's like talking to the room. Um, and then she says, she would bang her walking frame against the walls. Touch one of the girls. She keeps getting the ghost to touch oh, the Saturdays. So I know. Weird. She's just so, she's like really it's ramping very up the fear like, factor. Very TV, isn't it? Very, 
Yeah, I love That's, it. Yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, and then she throws a toilet plunger into the middle of the room and leaves. Uh, and she leaves uh, Yvette. Yvette. And then she leaves all the Saturdays in the room alone. <laughs> She's like, ah! Yeah, ah! <laughs> Go get the toilet plunger. Yeah. And then... Um, and then they all um, bunk off into the kitchen right. of the house. And Holly says, I can smell a stew. Um, it's lovely. And then um, and then Rochelle. Who's Holly? Holly's the fit blonde one. Molly, uh, I meant. Molly. Sorry. Fucking hell, Molly, Susie. Holly. Molly, Holly. Trolly. Molly. Who gives Trolly. a fuck? Um, and then Rochelle says, Stolly. something blew on my neck and I'm not fucking kidding. And then the vet says, is there a man here who likes Rochelle? Huh. So yes, I feel like she, she, she kind of executed this. Mm-hmm. To be honest, uh, and then they all go to the clock tower, which mm. is where this man like hung himself because his like wife was cheating on him. Right, um, and they really then they like the fear is like really ratched up. Right, and then they do this um, big Ouija board, and um, Molly's like, I can't do this. I just knew he was furious, and then Vanessa um, shouts, Oh fuck! Starts crying, and then, and then they get the Ouija board to spell out um, what the spirit thinks Una's dad is called, and right. it spells out his initials. Uh, well, we know that a Ouija board does in fact work. Yeah, and then Una goes, "My dad's called John." Um, that was Northern Irish. Um, my Irish accent is hideous, and I'm so sorry to any yeah, Irish people bad, listening. Yeah. So bad. Your Northern um, one is excellent. And then she gets them all in a lift. It's great, and then. Um, they discover the spirit of a little girl, right? And Una really at this point is taking charge. She's like, she's the one who's like, no fear. She's Catholic. So she's like, yeah, I fucking got this. I've got God on my side kind of vibes. And then Una throws a marble to this little girl and one rolls back. And then Vanessa says, Una's got a connection. And then they keep going around and then they hear this noise that goes, mm-hmm. Weird. I did like the gruffalo. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what um, the fuck is that? That's, that's Gizmo, isn't it? G- yeah, yeah, that's it. Gizmo. Yeah, it's like, mm. 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 Um, and then, and then they um, they lose the marble. They don't know where it's gone. And then suddenly, Una's like, oh, it's on me. And then Yvette goes, maybe it's trapped under your bra. Um, and that's lol. <laughs> is it? Is it? Oh, no. And then... Um, no, I'm asking you, is it? What do you mean? Is it? Is it oh, right. Uh, we don't know. We don't okay, know. fine. They're all, they're all f- honestly, a lot of this show uh, okay. is freaking out. Uh, I'm screaming. very... I'm going to watch all this. Um, oh, yeah. And then Rochelle says... It's one thing a woman ghost, but a man ghost is just a bit more scary. Yeah, it is. I agree. Fair. I agree completely. Fair. And then, um, then, then she's asking like Yvette's like really like ramping up the tension, right. and she's like trying. She's like, "If you're there, give us a sign." Mm-hmm. And then Vanessa shouts, "Slam the fucking door!" <laughs> <laughs> and then Rochelle goes. You shouted at it, Vanessa. It's your fucking fault. Wow. Yeah, it gets it, honestly. It, it starts like the wheels are coming off at this point. Great. And then they find a wheelchair. Classic. So do girls allowed. Yeah. There's always a fucking wheelchair. Um, and then Rochelle and Vanessa had enough. They're like they leave for the taxi. Yeah, for safety. Fine. Um, the taxi's got ghosts. It's really. got yeah. ghosts. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, there's loads of crosses on it. And then, and then Vanessa says in the taxi, "I knew." They were real, but this has proved it 250%. 250%. Yeah, it's my favourite That bit. is That is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, too proved much. Proved it 250%. Um, and then Una goes back for a marble and she goes, where's my marble? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Vanessa says, ghosts, get out my life. And um, that's that's all I've got. No, it, that's amazing. I'm great. looking forward to getting to watch it. Speak. It's really good. And uh, there's some really iconic moments. Great. But right, thank you so much for covering that. No problem. Um, we did get a lot of requests for that, actually, which is very, very nice. Um, okay, we're going to play a very quick little game. Okay. We're going to see if it works. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to turn the lights down. <laughs> uh, basically, what's going to happen is you're going to say something three times. Mm. What I have to do is then call my my home phone, so my, my, my childhood phone, no. and a spirit is going to answer it. No. Yeah. So what do I have to say? I'll tell you now. So we, when we close it, you have to close your eyes and concentrate, and you have to say three times, "Spirit, spirits, answer my call." So am I? You're calling your home. Is someone going to pick up? Well, it's either going to be my mom 
or it's going to be a ghost. We just don't. So know do I is. say hello to your mum? Well, I'll well we'll see who answers and then I'll speak. If it's my mum, obviously it's a bit weird otherwise. So, okay. but I'm hoping the spirit's going to answer it. And then I say what? It's you say spirit, spirit, answer my call. Say that three times. Spirit, spirit, answer my call. Yeah. So okay. go now. Close your eyes. Think about it. And um, spirit, spirit, answer my call. Spirit, spirit, answer my call. Spirit, spirit, answer my call. Oh, who's that? That's uh, a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I did have to call the old home phone earlier on to check whether or not it still works. So it did ruin the element of surprise. So is this my is this Terry Bitchkowski, i.e. my mum? Yes, it is. Oh, Hi Terry. Such a shame. <laughs> I don't think I am, Sounds to like be fair. Ha- okay, well, a bit rude. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so there's no ghost there. Can you please let us know if, if a ghost does turn up? Because we were kind of hoping for it. Yeah, get him to call us back. I'll, I'll let you know. Thanks, Thanks Mum. Cheers. Thanks, yeah. Terry. Bye. See you later. So why do you need this number? Because, oh, Mum, we, we had to call the We had to call the spirits, and I have to call my childhood phone. Bank connection. No, <laughs> Mom, I'll call you next week to talk. Oh yeah, I do oh have to tell you about the DVD doll the next week. I'm sure we've got some good This is an absolute cliffhanger. I yeah, know. it is. I'll tell you next week. All right, Mom. Love you loads. Bye. Bye, Terry. That's okay, well, that was not successful. Was... Okay, thank you so much for joining us. We'll tell the story about the voodoo doll next week. Yeah, we'll tell you about the voodoo thank doll next week. Thank you for joining week. us um, for Ghost Hunt. And also, like, we want to hear your story, so please send them in. Please send them um, in. And then we'll play them and we'll have a little chat. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, we'll see you next week. And goodbye! Goodbye! Bye.